you're probably here because either you already are a data analyst or you want to become one and you want to kick ass at the job. You have come to the right place because today we're going to be talking about non-technical data analyst skills or soft skills, although I don't like the word soft skills because they're all skills that are incredibly important and value adding. Some of these you might have heard of, some of these might be new to you, some of these you might already be applying in your everyday life and you might not even realize it. If that is the case, do let me know in the comments and without further ado, let's do this. What is up you nerdy people, welcome back to my channel. I'll just get right into the seven non-technical skills that data analysts need in their everyday jobs. Number one is breaking problems into smaller components. Pretty often the problems that data analysts embark on solving are actually much bigger than what you can maybe comprehend at once or solve with just looking at that one big problem. This type of structured thinking can help you look at all of the areas that you might need to investigate in order to solve a problem, but it also might help you structure your data analytics project into the parts of the problem and subsequently what solutions might apply to the problem based on all of those parts. Let's take an easy example. You're a business or a financial analyst for a company and they want to know why profits are not increasing even though they've made efforts to do something about it. If you just want to look at profit numbers for the different revenue streams, that doesn't necessarily tell you why they're not increasing. So it's really important to have a structured approach to this problem and start breaking it down so that you can see where the problem might be. We know that profits are essentially just revenues minus costs. By just breaking it into those pieces, you can start looking at our revenues increasing or decreasing. So it's the problem on the revenue side of things. And what's happening to the costs? Are they growing faster than the revenues causing profits? to not grow. From there, you already have a direction to go into. Obviously, you can explore both and opportunities in both directions, but if you're looking for root causes, this already gives you an idea of where to look. Another example that's super familiar to me is systems analysis. In order for me to understand why there's a problem in a system, it doesn't just make sense for me to stare at the problem and try and figure out what's happening. I usually look at two directions upstream, what areas are impacting the problem area or issue, and based on that, where could the problem be? But also downstream, I want to quantify what is the impact of this particular problem on processes and parts of the system that are dependent on this particular area where the problem is. By doing that, I'm usually able to pick out where the problem is most likely going to be and dive deep, deeper into that particular area, but also I'll be able to put numbers on what is the actual impact of this particular bug or system error. Some might call this technical thinking or a technical mindset, but what it really essentially is, is breaking down processes, problems, and issues into their constituent parts that can together in combination explain a change or phenomenon. Skill number two is stakeholder management. And this is one thing that isn't talked about nearly enough. Knowing who to involve in the planning of your analysis, understanding who it's for and what they need, as well as when to involve people in giving feedback and validating your results is crucial. At the same time, you want to make sure that you're involving the people that your analysis is for and who can validate the insights that are, you are actually producing. But at the same time, you also want to make sure that people don't butt in in the middle of your analysis with additional requirements that might change the scope of your analysis and are completely outside of what was agreed on in the beginning. In that sense, it's much like project management, actually, and you have to be able to manage other people's involvement and input. If additional requirements come up in the middle of your project, just like in project management, you're going to have to be able to then negotiate either the timeline or the resources that you're able to use for your analysis, because obviously with additional requirements, you're already kind of but in into the scope aspect of the triple constraints of project management. So what you're left with is negotiating for more resources or capacity or a longer timeline. It takes practice and getting to know how your organization usually does these things is helpful. I do want to plug in here that stakeholder management is actually covered in the Google Data Analytics Certificate. I'll link it down below. I'm going to be doing a full review of the whole thing. So I'm actually going through the courses right now and I want to do an in-depth review on if it's actually worth it, both time and money wise, and where the value actually lies in the courses. But I did want to say that this is actually covered and I'm really excited about the certificate courses because 
they cover a lot of contacts that isn't normally covered in analytics courses so if you do want to check that out I'll link the course down below I, I will be doing a review on it so if you want to see that before you actually go ahead and, and invest time or money in it do hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss that upload skill number three is learning and curiosity data analysts work super fast to uncover insights for their organizations but they need to hone their skills be efficient learners and actually keep up to date with their knowledge at all times to be able to do their best at it and yes learning is a skill the more you delve into data analytics the better you're going to become in realizing what you don't know or the gaps in your knowledge and that is so essential to be able to effectively fill in those gaps and prioritize your learning in order to maximize what you can do with your entire skill set and in tech the amount of things that you don't know is actually quite a lot usually just because the industry moves so fast which just makes it so much more important for you to be an efficient learner and curious about the topics that you work with in order to be successful this also includes being able to identify how you learn best and what kinds of resources you most enjoy learning with. Personally, I'm a huge fan of online courses and online learning. I like platforms like Coursera, Udemy, and Datacamp, but you know, you might be more of a project-based learner. You might just figure out a good idea for a project for your portfolio and not have all the skills, but what you figure is, you know what, I'm just gonna learn the skills as I go. Like, I'll figure out what I need to do. So, that might be you. It's not me personally, but it doesn't make either one of us any worse as a learner. It just means that we know how we learn best and that's so important. The fourth skill that I want to talk about is creating context. And what this means is that whenever you're talking about your insights or your findings or your analysis, you need to be able to create enough context for your audience to understand what you're talking about. And this is not a technical skill because this has more to do with understanding who you're talking to or presenting to or creating your analysis or work product for than it is about the data that you work with. Whether you're building a dashboard for another team or you're conducting a complex analysis or you're building an analytics product, no matter what it is, usually in my experience this boils down to two questions. How much does your audience know about this particular topic? And two, why is this important to them? By knowing what your audience already knows, you're able to ensure that you have enough detail in what you're presenting to them in order for them to easily digest and understand what you're talking about or how to use a product that you've built for them. With understanding why it's important to them, you're able to actually capture their attention with details that are relevant to their goals rather than them listening to you for half an hour and then wondering why this is relevant. So whenever you're working on your analysis, do ask yourself these two questions and maybe also ask them to your stakeholders that are relevant to what you're doing in order to make your analysis more useful, digestible and actionable. Skill number five is going to be thinking about scalability and automation. Great analysts think about efficiency whenever they're working on something. They don't just think about how can I make this a great report or how can I make this the best dashboard ever. They think, is this a report that goes out frequently? Or is this a dashboard that could be applicable to more than just the team that I'm building it for? And if so, can automating something or scaling something to a bigger audience actually be more efficient in the long run and remove hours worked in the future by investing a little bit more time right now? So if you're building a report, if it goes out frequently, if you build an automation to do that, say, on a weekly basis, if that's how often the report goes out, does the amount of time that you spend on building that automation offset the time that you would be building that report every single week in the future? A lot of the times the answer is yes, which means that it's easier to spend a little bit more time now on automating the report so that you can actually focus on something else with that time in the future. With dashboards, for example, there might be more stakeholders than who you're working with currently that use pretty similar data, if not the exact same data for what they do, maybe in a slightly different format. Would it make sense to maybe talk to the stakeholders and see if you can actually scale that dashboard to multiple teams with very little extra effort rather than building dashboards for all of those teams separately? Great analysts think about removing the middleman. So the analyst from the equation of a stakeholder in the organization accessing data in a format that they need and understand. So in essence, you're trying to make yourself obsolete in the process so that you have more time to focus on 
cooler projects, new projects. Bear in mind, automation doesn't always make sense. It makes sense only if spending that time to automate something is less time spent on it or less resources spent on it than there would be spent in the future doing the same thing again. But a lot of the times in organizations, this isn't thought about. You can make your organization more resource efficient by just applying a little bit of your knowledge to usually a fairly simple problem. The sixth skill, I already kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, but it's basic project management skills. And yeah, we don't call data analysis projects projects for no reason. That's what they are. And in order to be effective and efficient in managing them, you do need to manage the triple constraints of project management within your data analysis process. Those are time, so you need to have a timeline, scope, the requirements that you have gathered for your data analysis project, as well as resources, whether that's you or more people than you working on that project. The further you progress in your career as a data analyst, the better you need to get at presenting your projects professionally. And this might include things like a professional project proposal. It might mean that you need to articulate risks involved in your project, say data privacy or confidentiality concerns. And and how you're mitigating those. You'll need to list your stakeholders, make sure that you have a business case for your analytics project. You need to be able to articulate the results that you might be able to bring with this. And you need to be able to present a realistic timeline for your entire project and all of its constituent parts. Say you're building a dashboard for your company. There might be a lot of different parts to the project that you need to actually, first of all, think about, agree on with your stakeholders, and plan accordingly because there might be dependencies between the different tasks. You might need new data sources, or maybe you need to build tables that actually act as a data source for your dashboard. And depending on where you are in your career or how technically skilled you are or how complex that particular data source is to build, you might need to talk to a data engineering team, or you might need time for yourself to actually build that data source. And everything for that dashboard might actually kind of hinge on that so everything depends on that task. You might be building different views for your dashboard and different kinds of widgets for it and all these might take a different time to actually design, build and test. You might also want to do some user testing with your stakeholders before you launch this global dashboard to all of the company and so you might want to reserve some time for that and also agree with your stakeholders on when that's going to happen. Maybe there are confidentiality concerns so maybe before you actually can launch you need to be talking about permissioning the tables um, as well as the dashboard before you actually go ahead and launch it. All of these things need to be in your project proposal and your plan and you might not think about data analysts as project managers but in a sense you are. You are doing project management in all of your analytics projects so actually becoming a better project manager makes you a more effective data analyst. Skill number seven is thinking in different ways and Hold on to your hats here, because I might be spoiling something, but usually your analytics results aren't just going to fall on your lap, right? And this is actually something that I don't think is talked about nearly enough in data analytics education. We talk a ton about your technical skills, and yes, it's important to have a certain level of technical knowledge and technical skills in order to become a data analyst. But equally, data analysts and data analyst candidates go through interviews that measure their critical thinking, their analytical thinking, and problem solving skills. And if you don't nail that one, and kind of frankly just nail all of those skills in your everyday work, your technical skills are just not gonna save you. So let's talk about three different types that I think are super important for data analysts. The first one being analytical thinking or approaching problems in a structured way. Analytical thinking essentially has to do with how you choose a strategy to approach and solve a problem. Are you able to get to the root cause of the problem? Are you able to keep in mind the problem that you're trying to solve throughout the entire process we're analyzing it and trying to come up with solutions. How do you choose to approach gathering data as well as managing it throughout the process in order to make effective use of it and not spend too many resources or gather too much data that you're not going to need? Are you able to find a good way to present your solutions and your insights to your stakeholders and how do you do that? Are you able to zoom back out after you've done your analysis to look at the bigger picture and if everything makes sense in that context? All of this is something that is inherent to analytical thinking. And without this skill, you're not going to be as efficient or effective as an analyst. Luckily, this actually is covered in the data analysis certificate program by Google, which I've linked down below. If you're interested in that, go check it out. I was very happy to see that in the first course, the very first course of that program, they actually covered this and points. 
so many points for that. The second type of thinking that I want you to think about is critical thinking. And this is different from analytical thinking, although they go together a lot of the times. All of these three that I talk about do. But critical thinking has more to do with finding the right problem, identifying the root cause and knowing you've gotten there. It has to do with deducing whether your conclusions are actually true. You need to think critically in order to also identify what your data is not saying as opposed to what it is saying, because that is also important in understanding what are the limitations of your analysis and your data sets? You need critical thinking for things like differentiating between correlation and causation, which is one of the data analytics staples, as well as induction to generalize from different samples and whether you're able to do that. You also need critical thinking to make sure that you're not introducing bias into your analysis and checking yourself before you actually go ahead with your project in order to make sure that your conclusions are not only true but fair. If you're interested in learning more about critical thinking, there's a good specialization on logical and critical thinking on Coursera that I link down below, but it's something that's really really important and actually comes up in a lot of interviews as well. The third and final type of thinking that I think all analysts need is creative thinking. And creative thinking is something that you need in order to create new and unexpected results by switching your viewpoint and how you approach your problem. And you can use different kinds of thinking tools to do this or just try and find different angles to look at what you're actually trying to solve for. There are definitely moments in data analytics where you need a creative thinking hat. Maybe if you're looking at your data and you're trying to figure it out and it just won't budge. Or you may have actually tried and exhausted a lot of options to solve a problem and you just really need a new kind of out of the box way of looking at how to solve it. And there are different kinds of tools that you can help yourself to brainstorm these kinds of ideas. And there's also a Coursera course on this one and I'll link it down below as well. It might help you if you are struggling with this type of thinking, but do check it out. It might be useful. And I really do want to emphasize that you're going to need all three of these and a lot of the times you need them together. An example I can give you from my personal life is that I've gotten the interview question. Think about a process that either your team or a stakeholder team that you work with owns. What, in your opinion, doesn't work about that process and how would you redesign it to be better? That is a question where you need all of these three types of thinking simultaneously on the spot. And it's not a technical question, it's literally just assessing whether you're able to be analytical about the problem and the solutions, whether you're going to be able to think critically about whether you got to the root cause of the problem, and if you're creative enough to come up with different types of solutions, and if you're able to think critically and analytically to evaluate which ones of those are actually feasible. If you feel like you might need to brush up on any of these three skills, do check the description box for the course suggestions that I've left there. It's, it's imperative that you actually get these right, because honestly, in all of the analyst positions that I've been in, critical and analytical thinking skills have been heavily emphasized in all of the interviews. So it's not only about going through a technical interview and surviving a lead code drill, it's actually about showing that your thinking and your logic are sound. And that might sometimes be more important than the technical part. You might make a mistake in the technical part, but technical skills are something that you can learn. If you butcher your analytical thinking or critical thinking interview, there's a good chance that you're not going to get that job. It's much harder to coach and train someone to think in certain ways than it is to actually teach them some SQL. So those are the seven non-technical skills that I wanted to talk about today. If you found this video helpful, click the thumbs up. If you'd like to see content like this in the future, do hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments down below. If you are already applying some of these skills to your everyday life, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. And without further blabbering on, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.